Hey family, it's Tasha Mar, we're prepping. So, welcome to the channel, welcome back to the channel. You already know what time it is, baby. Get your drink, pull up. I'm drinking in probably the oldest coffee mug that I have. This was my first reenlistment cup at my first command. So, probably 15 years ago, 16 years ago. So, cheers, hoorah. Um, all right, so today, like I alluded to yesterday, I wanted to talk about, you know, a false sense of security. And I really just wanted to have a discussion about this topic because I I am my family, me and my husband both, because of possibly our military background, um, are very, very heavily into security fortification um, and protection of this home. And we think about that in all facets and all levels of threats, right? Um, and how bad things can get from everyday security to, you know, um, maybe things are just a little chaotic, more, you know, an increase in theft and increase in robberies and increase in people doing things and being desperate. And then all the way to hardcore, you know, marauders, people trying to um, make entry and, and get into your, your place that you live whether it's to do harm, to steal everything you have, whatever the case may be. Um, and I want to talk about the false sense of security part because <clears throat> oftentimes I think this is a topic that can be scary for some people. People don't want to go there and let their minds go there because it, they think, well, if that's a negative thing, I don't want to think about the negative. I don't want to think about the, the bad. I just want to trust in God, which we absolutely do trust in God, trust and believe. Okay, first of all. However, you have to do something for yourself and you have to be prepared and preparing for security and for per the protection of your home, your, your family, your children, um, anybody who lives with you is important. And I think that oftentimes people look at these videos or look hear stuff on TV or wherever it is they got their information from about how important security is and they're sitting there and they're shaking their head like yes 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 i gotta do that okay yes i gotta get these locks yes i gotta get this for the windows okay yes i gotta think about this okay yes yes right and but then you don't do it right and, and it's because you already feel some sort of safety uh level of safety in your home um you're like look i have a house i have windows and doors they have strong locks on them uh, I have a ring camera on my front door. Nothing's ever happened in this this neighborhood. Maybe you live in a gated community. Maybe you live in what's considered a better neighborhood. Um, and that sense that sense of security sets in and, and you get complacent and you're like, okay, I'm good. But the problem is, and a lot of people do not prepare until something happens. It's just like overall preparedness. A lot of folks don't prepare until something happens. They go through something. They go through a bad storm. They go through whatever it is, a hurricane, an earthquake, whatever, famine, Great Depression, whatever your age, right? There's something that you went through that happened. Maybe your house, you grew up in your house burned down three times, right? Like going through something traumatic like that, losing everything that you've ever, you know, ever, ever worked for, that's traumatic. And a lot of times... Um, people won't take action until they've gone through something. And then those are the folks that start prepping. That's why you have so many people that started prepping after COVID. That was a huge pandemic. That was a huge thing. That was a huge uh, first time people, some people, some people saw shortages and understood and felt what that felt like and didn't like the feeling. And then for started, you know, prepping inflation, it, like all that stuff is impacting people's decision to start doing stuff. So it was the fear of not being able to get your hands on something. What happens if I can't get this? And that then turned into action and you did it. And home security and fortification is the same thing. It's like this ugly thing that people don't wanna think about. People don't wanna think about, hey, how do I keep people from jump, jumping my fence? when things go left, right? Um, when there's no power, there's no security, there's no 911, how do you protect your family? How do you ensure they don't get in the house? How do you even know that they're in on your property or in your house or breaching your house? Like people don't wanna think about that stuff because it's scary, but that causes a false sense of security, okay? And so I think that if you're watching this, if you're still watching this, that's a concern to you, should be a concern, and you've gotta step up your game and you've got to take a look at this stuff. I'm gonna tell you some stuff I do, right? So some stuff ha has happened to me in the military that heightened, very much heightened my personal security, right? And locking doors and triple checking. Every night I triple check the doors, right? I'm not going around every window because 
our windows stay closed all the time, locked, bolted with extra locks. You know what I'm saying? Like all the time, right? It's very rare for windows to be open. Um, and that's just our family, right? Doors, kids don't go to the doors. Nobody opens a door unless you're me or hubby, right? Um, or an adult, obviously, okay? Um, you know, so I'm obsessive of, of locks. I walk the property. When I get up in the morning, I do the chores with the animals. I walk the property. I walk the property just this morning. I look for tracks. Now, this is not me out there with a telescope looking for stuff. This is me merely just walking around. And when I say the property, remember, I have a half acre. It's not like I have 40 acres, right? But if I had 40 acres, I would be doing some sort of perimeter um, watching. I would be walking around. I'd be walking, taking my ATV out. I'd be doing something in, this, in the sense of watching your property and looking at it. So it doesn't matter what you have. Even if you have a little backyard, you should be paying attention. That's how you see things that are happening in your area. That's how you can see if maybe somebody was in the backyard, what animals are in the area, right? There was a couple times I was going to the back. We have this huge cement pad in the back behind the trees, behind the chickens. You can't see it in most videos that I do on my other channel. Um, but I was kept walking back there in the mornings and finding apple cores. And I'm like, or ha apples half eaten. And I'm like, okay, we don't have no apple trees over here. There's no apple trees. I'm looking at the neighbors. I'm, I'm not seeing any obvious apple trees, right? And so I'm like, who was over here? So in my mind, I'm like, who, who, who the F was in this backyard with apples throwing these cores down, right? I go back there another morning. I actually scare a squirrel that was in this one part on the fence. He jumps because he's scared of me. He jumps and he had an apple in his hands and he dropped it right in front of me. And I said, mm, aha, that's, that's where these apple cores are coming from. He's getting apples um, from the apple trees and he's coming over here to eat them and then he's discarding them over here. But you don't know that stuff if you don't walk around, right? Today, I saw tracks. Um, I was trying to figure out if my cat is coming out of her place because it's been extremely cold. I seen cat tracks. Well, it wasn't hers. It was another cat. I could clearly see where it came from one neighbor's house, walked by my property in the front, walked. I saw where it hopped a fence. Now I was able to do that so intensely because there was snow, right? So I could, I could clearly see the tracks. But um, it's it paying attention to that stuff, right? Um, false sense of security. People just leaving stuff out, leaving gates unlocked so people can come in, leaving stuff outside, you know? You know how many times on the ring I see people complaining about, um, you know, uh, boots were stolen, uh, you know, different stuff off their porch was stolen. Like, and, and then I see these videos or they're showing you a video of a bobcat and there's just clutter. There's just all this stuff that, that people, you know, opportunity, people are desperate. People want things and they're going to take them and you can't be trusting of people and leave stuff out. You can't leave stuff locked anymore. And I understand this is the thing. Fear causes action. Now, I know some people are like, I don't like that. That's an ugly thing, but it's the truth. People prepare because they go through something and then they want to prepare. Security, people that have tons of cameras and you see that typically they went through something. Something has happened to them or a family member or a friend that caused them a certain amount of fear of, we've got to get these cameras up. We've got to be able to see what's going on. Um, what if something happens? We want to be able to record it. We want to be able to see this stuff, right? Um, and so they put those up, right? Me, I'm obsessed with seeing stuff. So cameras are important. Um, and, and I'm just going to say it, having just a ring camera on your door is not going to, is not going to cut it, right? People are bold. You know how many people I see on videos breaking into the door with the ring camera? Um, they don't care. They're either you know, there's a chance the person is not, that the camera doesn't even work. It's not recording. There's a chance the person isn't paying attention. They're in a meeting at work. They're somewhere where they're not paying attention to notifications. They don't even know. Um, and they're willing to take the chance or they're willing to say, who cares? This light comes on. I bet I can get in this house or this car faster and get something before police show up or anybody shows up to try to get me, right? Um, and they take their chances. People, and as we move forward and people get desperate, you're going to see more and more of that. And I'd hate for fear to be the reason why you finally do something when you can slowly within your budget build up and start doing stuff right think about your perimeter um 
you know, I think of how easy it is to get over a fence. Uh, where would they get in at? Um, is there trees on the other side of the fence that's helping to assist them to do that? Is there anything on my side of the fence that helps them and assists them to do that easily, right? Um, it's just you have to find things, see things, and then correct it right away um, and figure out how to do it. We had a raccoon coming in, for example, um, and he was crawling up some of my lattice to get out instead of going back out the way, whatever way he came in, because he definitely didn't come in that way. And he was breaking this lattice down every night trying to get out. And I clearly could see him coming in a certain direction and going out on this lattice, right? And I was like, so we, we had to fix it, right? And we're, we're going crazy, looking at cameras, trying to catch this fool so we can see exactly what's happening, where he's at, where he's coming in at. And so it took us a while of doing different security things. And this is against an animal but it's no different. And then we had to do a couple security things. He still came in. Okay. That one thing we did isn't working. That's not where he's coming in at. Um, let's, let's look at this. Okay. We found another, uh, perimeter breach hole spot that he might've been coming in. I don't know. Can he get through there? Maybe. So we fixed it up. We did several things and he hasn't been back. All right. And so I think we finally did it, but it's no different. You, this false sense of security, like even going out and going to the grocery store, okay, it's daytime, I'm safe. You're not necessarily safe. You still need to take precautions. You need to still park as close to the store as possible. You need to lock your doors as soon as you get in the in the um, in the car, right? Um, you you need to pay attention to your surroundings and, and what's going on, right? Um, that's still important. That doesn't go away because it's daytime. Bad things happen all the time in the in daytime. Okay. Um, I had a video where I mentioned I don't know maybe a few weeks ago we had three stores that were hit with day broad light, you know, robberies, you know, one of them was at gunpoint and it's daytime in a little, in a littleish town, right? So, um, anything can happen anytime and it's important. So if you're watching this, please, please, I'm going to link, try to link some videos that I've done before about security. I think I did a video the difference between security and fortification. Um, so I, I'm sure I'm going to link those videos because they're going to go more in depth of different things you can do. But you need to figure out um, because every layer of security, every layer of fortification that you do on your home, on your car, on your person, um, is going to help so that you're not fearful and you don't, and then you won't have to go through something fearful in order to cause action to finally do something. Because by the time the fear happens, you might not have the opportunity to get the things that you need to get, that you need to buy, that you need to employ. Um, you might not be able to get those things. You know, we ha we're having a problem with shortages and getting things. And as turmoil happens, as possible future wars happen and your ability to get something, you have the luxury of being able to buy these security items, to buy different things, to employ different things in your house and around your home that you might not be able to later, okay? And so get those things now um, while you still can and think about security. And don't just watch this and shake your head and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then don't do it, right? You need, at nighttime, you need to go out and walk around your house or your apartment at night and see how lit is it? How dark is it? Where can people um, hide, right? You know, simple things like it's dark time and you're walking from your apartment or your home to your car. Where are, is there any dark spots? Is there any places where people can hide and then jump out, right? super super important i can't i can't stress that enough okay um you got to start paying attention to your personal safety your personal surroundings and taking care of your home and taking care of it now not later now okay um, because false sense of security you know how many doors i drive by or see so easily to be kicked in like can your door be how easy is it to for your door to be kicked in right now and, you know and then how many doors do you have in your house What's the main door that you think would be the easiest to break in? Like secure that first. Like think about these things because people people are doing stuff and, and it's much easier. And you're asleep. You can't hear it, you know. And then I tell hubby all the time, you know, he's got the CPAP. And I tell him, I hear everything, everything, okay. And I'm up. I'm up checking, looking, right? And I, I joke all the time, we're going to die because he's got the CPAP and can't hear anything or he's deep asleep, right? And I'm the one paying attention. I'm really paying attention, right? But so fast to break in a, a, a front door or whatever door, if you do, if you have not done what you need to do to enforce it, um, 
all of that stuff gives you time to then grab defensive tools, right? But there's a lot of stuff that you can do that really enhances it where they can't kick it in. It's impossible to kick it in. It's, it's difficult, right? And they give up. There's just, they're not getting in, right? And then all that noise and all that is waking you up and getting you time to, you know, be able to um, defend yourself, okay? Call 911, whatever it is you and your family um, will do, okay? So, I hope you guys are doing well. The weather is crazy all across the United States. Blessing prayers for everybody. You know, I'm already seeing reports of people passing away. You know, it's more than exposure. It's super icy conditions. It's a lot of snow. It's super very, very low, low temperatures, minus conditions with wind chills that are just off the chain and everybody's feeling it. So if you're going through that in your area, you know, we, we are going through it, the, the, but the east, those middle states, even the upper east, I mean, everybody's getting it. Okay. So please be safe. Um, Stay inside, stay warm, stay cozy. Make sure you're doing your staging stuff. We're going to talk about storms tomorrow, but make sure you're staging your stuff and getting ready. If, if, if maybe the storm hasn't hit your area yet, really, really do what you got to do today to prepare for that storm. Staging stuff, getting your hot water and your thermoses set, um, you know, get, making sure all the animals have, you know, warm water and food and are bundled up wherever they sleep, that they have extra bundling, extra care um, and thought into that, right? Just really, really think that through if the, if it hasn't hit you. And if it's hit you, baby, just, just buckle down, get you a warm drink, you know, light that fire, and just write it out, write it out in grace. You're ready to go. So I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video. Take care.